Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently I screwed up on my last one because I have apparently died since our last little adventure here. Uh, I probably forgot to take my helmet off, so I probably died of... Oh, that's the generator we want the air filter on. I probably died floating out in that ship, which is a, a tragedy, but I'll live. So, uh, I did some experimenting uh, this morning, right before I got back on, to kind of experiment with what the mechanics were with the new ship and everything. And one of the things I found out is that the new ship does not count as a... Uh, as your ship. It is, it is counted as something else, so... From the minute you get on, you could immediately uh, pull in a, a rescue ship and get a one of the big ships. So that uh, that piece of information is extremely helpful because that means that you're not really meant to use this little ship as your primary maneuvering vessel. So, like, I'm going to see if my ship is still out here or if it has drifted away. It has drifted 1.6 kilometers away, uh, which means that we need to go get it. Okay, where are you? Oh, and it is over there. So, before we can do anything else, we've got to go retrieve this ship and dock it. That's annoying, but... 1.6 kilometers is not terribly bad. I mean, that's a it's a long uh, spacewalk, but I mean, as you can see, the distance is closing rather quickly. So, um, I'm thinking that we're gonna need to do a new sort of quick start guide for when this comes out because it is gonna mess people up, and they're gonna get killed in that little ship. because the the way that it works is frankly really terrible uh, but it could be useful extremely useful for for multi for multi character for for like a team playthrough because of it allows a, a special kind of versatility because you can tow it with the the arg mining vessel or the the the, the arg craft since you can tow it with that, that means that if you were to say find uh, an enemy base, you could use one of these things to tear their station apart and move things off, move off with things, or use it to do a short warp while carrying it as a as a hiking pack for your your arc, or if you were gonna do battery power on your ARG, you could use that as a, uh, a heavy battery. Because towing it would allow you to massively increase the size of your capacitor. Uh, it also serves as a, uh, again, a massive capacitor for your, your station. So, I mean, you could consider these things mobile batteries, maybe, uh, that can be attached to different parts of the station. That can be extremely useful when it comes to making sure that uh, a station has power and, and other capabilities beyond what it's able to generate on its own. There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting application ideas that I can think of just off the top of my head. But we're going to get the arg here and you'll see that they they kind of just removed the clamps on the tail here so it looks kind of funny. Cuz it's got basically like pieces of it cut out uh, and I haven't explored any other changes to this ship cuz it looks like there are ooh, uh that there are some changes to the components on the back here. 
we may have to explore that at some point here just to see what's doing what but let's go ahead and depressurize that open the outer door Ugh, gotta relearn all my controls here close the outer door pressurize alright helmet inner door okay, and as always we're gonna do a quick drop in And let's go look for our body. Okay, our body obviously despawned before this point, but let's go ahead and turn the ship around to the outpost. Controls are a lot more twitchy now, uh, so it's interesting to see how that is affecting it. You got to be a little more careful in how you're doing it. Uh, so we've still got some of the same basic information being displayed. Uh, there is, of course, not as much. Whoa, slow down. Uh, the, the displays do look to be, like, much more simplified. I'm hoping that they will eventually still give you, like, orbital information so that you can see the correct information. And that's simply from personal preference of having played games that, that don't give you as much uh, latitude when it comes to this stuff. Okay, that thing's, that thing's actually fairly large. It's uh, much larger than I thought it would be. So we may have to adjust the positioning of that ship, uh, put it over the main the main unit here so that we can access and dock this ship to the uh, to the docking bay here all right let's uh, let's plan that so we're we're docked in place or we're, we're matched in velocity Let's go ahead and uh, my warp drive's dead, isn't it? I left my warp drive on, or my uh, my. Yeah, no fuel. All right, so I'm thinking that uh, this has been a good learning lesson, and I'm gonna try to make a good go of it. But I'm probably, for all intents and purposes, I'm probably going to abandon this this playthrough and uh, restart, probably on a on a another server and take the lessons learned and move move on kind of deal just because uh, there is obviously a lot to be learned from this uh, this little ship though has given me a bunch of ideas for uh, sort of the that starting exploit that we worked out in the last build of regularly calling a, a new ship to you. Oh, that's funny. Those windows show the reverse on the other side. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Uh, but uh, doing the the calling of a of a rescue ship, and then uh, collision on this is not so good. The closing off of the. Uh, or calling calling a uh, a new ship 
sucking all the, the parts and everything out of it and then kicking it to space and saying bye bye uh, that actually may be a much more viable strategy now because uh, if you remember when we were originally doing it the big problem that it caused was that you did you had no storage space uh, in the station itself so when you would be gathering up all of these extra parts and everything else they basically, you know, the extra warp cells and whatnot would be basically floating around. <laughs> Causing an annoying amount of problems. But because this has storage, uh, and it doesn't count as your ship, you could reasonably have this be your storage locker on station. And this needs to be repaired. Um, okay. And I'm getting a little bit sick because my, my baby's been sick and uh, so it has been uh, all right. Put that away. Uh, let's release this. And let's take control. And we're just going to pop up just a little bit. We're going to go back to our docking view. We are going to lock onto that. All right. Actually, no. We do. We do want that. We want to zero out our moving away. I got to remember my orientation has changed here, so I've got to stop. Uh, thinking about it from the or other orientation. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll this sucker. Ugh. Need a Kleenex or something. So as we've seen, this ship is incredibly squirrely and will be very difficult to maneuver. And it looks like there's some damage on the ship there, or on the station, that we need to address at some point here. <laughs> Alright, so stop the rotation. Move the ship over. Oop, 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 don't. Okay. Maybe that's up and not down. I keep thinking of the fact that I'm pointed down from my ship's perspective. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's not good for me. <laughs> Give it just a tiny bit. So this little ship has got, actually both of the ships now have quite a bit of uh, RCS force. So they tend to buck around quite a bit. So if you uh, have been doing piloting and you've gotten mostly good at piloting in the previous versions, get ready for relearning because the, uh, the ships are much more twitchy now. And so you'll want to be uh, cognizant of that. And we have lost power. Why did we lose power? Oh, we already we had already shut off all power. Okay. All right. So, you can turn that on, turn it off. All right. So we're at full power, and now I can get in here and. Close the inner door, depressurize. So this gives us this gives us a lot of, of options. So let's uh, helm it on. Because again, we are in that sort of uh, mode of trying to make sure that we keep all of our stuff ready to go. So we're gonna kick this out here. I'm going to go back to this guy, and we are going. 
See, because they put the clamp on the bottom just like the other one. So now you can park a bunch of these things all over the place, which is neat, uh, but is also kind of weird. Just because if you're used to the old way, uh, you know, this, this doesn't compute in your brain. You're like, this does not make sense. Why? So we're going to go ahead and get back in here. We're going to dock the ship up. And we are going to close that door, repressurize. And I think that we can actually get away with uh, performing our sort of strip mining philosophy here. Open the inner door of just draining all of the resources out of this ship as we go along here. So drop this down. Let's, now that I've got my good repair tool. Let's repair this now. Okay, so we've got that repaired. Even though this ship has no fuel anymore, we can still take her for all she's worth. Put that away. Let's go ahead and get into docking mode and target that port. Alright, so we need to throw us to the side here. Okay, so this ship still has that sort of meaty uh, feel to it when you're maneuvering it around. Just remember that if you use if you use the the technique that I'm talking about here, that ship you you don't want to call this extra big ship until you have used that little one to move your station out of the debris fields because again, that is going to be a uh, a major problem for you in terms of getting your your towing and stuff in position. So we're definitely going to be making use of that little guy in our our new sort of planned action. But we are not going to be choosing uh, that as our default vehicle just because of the fact that with that bat without being able to extend that battery further, uh, you know, once we've upgraded it that ship might actually be very useful but the the weakness of it having no way of of generating power on its own and being entirely reliant on that power for its warp capabilities that ship has a huge huge vulnerability and you have to basically the, the way I'm working out operating it is uh, that more than likely what you're going to be end up end up doing is that you're going to be turning on the power just to do your warp like you're going to set up your warp alignment then you're going to step out of your ship or step out of your seat and turn on the power let it go to warp and then as soon as you get to your your destination you're gonna shut your power back down because if you don't you're gonna never have like like we did last time uh, even though I shut my power down uh, for whatever reason the trip itself cost so much power that we weren't able to make the return trip and that is a, a deadly deadly consequence so, all right, so we're on board. We have all the things that we want. Let's go ahead and drain this sucker because I'm not going to keep any part of this thing here. 
So let's start by filling the nitro on everything else. Airlock module, main station. Okay. Let's take the hydrogen out. Okay, don't have any other hydrogen tanks on there, so we'll do oxygen instead. Fill the oxygen on the station first. Uh, okay, nitrogen. Again, fill the station first because that's going to be our primary goal. And then fill the other ship for additional storage. And we are completely full on nitrogen in both regards. And okay, so we'll just pull the rest of the nitrogen over there for now. That pretty much fills up our storage though so we may not want to use all of that uh, okay nothing in the storage okay all right so we've got all of that out of the ship now we need to go and gut it for parts and fuel cells and whatnot and then we can kick it to the curb and detonate it all right, so we have no parts here, which is fine. Nothing in there still. I'll go ahead and pull these guys, just because I have a feeling that those may become relevant. Uh, let's take the rifle. Anything in the drawers here? Nope, nope, and uh, nope, nope, okay. So let's take that. No, I don't want that. I want the, the jetpack. The helmet, and then the suit. And let's move all of this back into our station. <laughs> to replace the suit that we lost previously. Alright, so. Go ahead and put that guy there. That guy there. And this guy right here. Alrighty, and keep that, but let's go ahead and put this one away. So now, as before, we're going to run into an issue of storage of some of this stuff as we go along because obviously. There's, oh. Make sure we're doing repairs as we see them, because obviously, as things go along, we're going to want to fix everything. So, now we've got this. Alright, so let's go check downstairs. Oh wait, we want the, the warp cells. Even though we used some of the warp cells on this, we, we still want to take them, because... You know, obviously every little bit that we can get that helps and there's no cell detonator now the other ship does start with a cell detonator which is super cool so we are going to use that to our advantage whoa 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 hey quit your nonsense all right, because this gives us uh, another tank, another drill. We can go ahead and pull all of that together. Any other parts hanging around inside here? If you please. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. So we've got the things that we need off of here. Let me see. Wow, that that elevator is become very unsmooth. 
uh, which is less than pleasing. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna stop. We're gonna. Let's go ahead and. Just to be safe here, we're gonna close the doors. Oh, wait. First things first. We wanna. Since we've got this, we don't need the air in this ship anymore. We've got all the internal parts off of it, and so we're going to get inside here, and we're going to pump the air out, because the air is just as valuable to us as anything else. Because again, waste not, want not, so we've got our air filter going, but we're going to go ahead and go to this guy, and we're going to say depressurize the bridge and the main deck and the cargo bay so now once those are all depressurized then the only thing that will matter is the airlock which I can depressurize on my own actually let's go ahead and do that uh, let's seal the doors so let's go ahead and close these doors Close the outer door. Come back inside and close the inner door. Oh! Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> planked his way inside. Oh. <laughs> it's like, sir, you've planked yourself into a gravity field. You are now falling on your ass. Alright, so I can also drain the airlock room in that ship without too much concern. Alright, so now that we've drained all of that, we're going to come over here and just make sure that the actual air resources are completely out of that ship and into here. Okay. So when we ditch this guy, we're not going to need to... we're going to have plenty of air to work with. A lot of red light coming in here somehow. I'm not sure from where. Okay, so we're gonna open this one. So we're pressurized in here, and the other the other one is not pressurized. So we're gonna close the inner door and begin depressurizing. Helmet on. And now we're gonna open the outer door. And although we probably could have pulled the docking release from there, I want to pull it from here because I want to stay with this ship as we go. So now we're separated and we're drifting away. And now it's time to scour the ship. Okay, so there's a part right there. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy because those catalysts are important. I don't think there's one on the other side. So again, this is this is that same model of yeah, there's not one over there. This is that same model that we followed before of stripping these ships of parts as we needed. Uh, we don't actually need all of these resource injectors purely from the standpoint that uh, because of the okay and again these are all parts that we don't actually need or currently have a use for let's see here part status okay what does this part actually do plasma accelerator we don't know that that actually does anything 
Uh, although you do have a spot for it here. So we'll take it. The plasma accelerator still has a, a role to play apparently uh, and we'll make use of it because you never know. It probably has to do with, with ship engine efficiency. So we're gonna crack open the oops, we're gonna crack open the inner door as well. Since this ship is depressurized. Oh don't don't get cocky, dude. Alright, we're in. We've taken everything this ship has to offer. So we are going to give her a fond farewell, self-destruct. Goodbye. And we are going to get out of here and return to our ship, or our, our station. So now, since we've got all this stuff in hand, let's go ahead and take this guy on into the, the little tugboat here. The love boat. I'm sorry, I will never do that again. Uh, Actually, I probably will, because I am a glutton for just really stupid, cheesy crap. So we will pressurize this here. And I love the sound, the, the sound design in this game, where the, uh, the sound comes back as you have air for the sound to actually travel through. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and now that we've established that we can do our little, uh, I don't know what to, I don't know how to phrase it, uh, our little exercise of um, being a dirty rotten scoundrel, I guess, I'm going to go ahead and take the time to fill up on all the things I need for my base here before putting one of these ships in as a permanent addition. Take that and put that there. That gives us about wow, eight, eight fuel cells, although we're probably going to ditch a bunch of them for the, uh, the more powerful fully fueled ones as we go through because that's going to be awesome. So I will touch base with you back once I have all of my equipment ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take these guys to start powering up the station with useful and awesome parts. And we will be back on the flip side.